Today, I will try to simply explain recording microscopic footages like this one by adapting microscope lenses to your digital camera or using the whole microscope system for photography and videography. In this part, I will show you some samples that I took with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera which was directly recording through the microscope without using any adapter. You can record directly through the microscope with your camera by stabilizing your camera with a tripod or you can purchase an adapter to connect your camera to your microscope. I'm using an M-Scope's beginner microscope. It comes with three lenses, 4X, 10X, and 40X magnification. Focusing is a big challenge when you're magnifying this much because microscope lenses have extreme narrow depth of field. It means even a tiny camera vibration will mess up your focus. That's why you need a solid, stable ground and strong light for successful focusing. Using the whole microscope can be easy because most of the microscopes have internal LED lights and smooth focal distance controller, which allows you to focus easily, especially when you're using 20x to 40x magnification. Focal area is that narrow when I focus on the blood cell cores, I lose the focus of the other part of the same cell. For this reason, if you don't have a flat object, focusing will change constantly depending on the distance. There are microscope lenses called plan objective, which performs better than regular microscope lenses, helps with the focal corrections. But still, your focus most likely look like this on 3D objects, especially with this magnifying scale. Here I tried to record a bug with a green glowing shell and tried to use 10x to 40x lenses. Interestingly, focusing by changing the distance creates this weird psychedelic effect. It looks like a computer generated animation, but all I'm making here is the changing the distance between my microscope lens and my object really slowly most microscope lenses are removable and they have a thread called rms there are RMS adapters for any type of camera mount and they're super cheap. In general, microscopic lenses are easy to adapt for any camera that you can even use them with your smartphone if you can figure out how to attach them. Basically, when you put a distance between your lens and your camera, you will increase the magnification. And when you decrease the distance, you will have more wider look and less magnification. By using this logic, you can easily adjust your magnification level without changing your lens all the time. Today I'm using the RMS2 Micro Four Third mount adapter ring and it was only 10 bucks on eBay. 
And installing was also pretty straightforward as you can see here. Now you can call this camera Blackmagic Macro Cinema Camera. There's also a way to DIY this adapter easily too. I used one of my old camera body cap for this DIY project which is also extremely cheap. Basically I made a hole in my camera body cap with a power drill and as I measured before it fits perfectly without leaking any light from the edges. That goes to my Canon EOS M. You can also use this three pieces of tube called uh, macro extension tube. It goes between your camera and your lens for increasing the distance to get more macro shots. I can extend this magnification by increasing or decreasing the distance without changing the microscope lens. Easy to carry around at a botanical garden or a natural hike. Like carrying a portable microscope with you. Using a stable tripod also can help with stabilizing your focus. To help focusing, you can flatten objects by using two clear glasses pressuring the object like a sandwich. And after finding the perfect focus, try not to move your camera, instead move your object. This way you can save time by avoiding adjusting your camera and tripod every time you change your composition. Using internal intermolometer with my Canon Magic Lantern to take simultaneous shots without touching my camera. You can also use any external intervalometer or timer mode on your camera. I want to take 800 raw pictures every 10 seconds to record this piece of green pepper while drying. I want to call this process microlapse, like time lapse in a macro level. And options are limitless if you have colored LED lights or different type of light sources that you can play with.
I will try to use my slider for more stable motion, especially when recording video. Considering that I'm using 10x lens, I will set my slider for the slowest speed, which is 1%. Most video cameras record 8-bit JPEG sequences when recording video, but today I'm using an open source Canon software. You can install your Canon camera and that will allow you to record videos with 14-bit colors between 24 to 60 frames per second. I know this sounds crazy, but it means that even this tiny 10 years old Canon can take 30 to 60 raw pictures per second. This software is called Magic Lantern and it is completely free. I will include the detailed information in the download links in the description about this software. Like I mentioned before, taking raw frames for video will allow you to color grade better without losing any quality. For example, you can bring up shadows to see more details in the dark areas. Raw video recording is pretty amazing that also creates dynamic range and cinematic look in your video. The only drawback about raw video recording is the size of the video file. Files are huge and taking lots of space. That's why Magic Lantern suggests you to use a super fast SD card. For editing and color grading, I'm using DaVinci Resolve. You can also download this software for free from DaVinci's website. They have a paid version called DaVinci Studio that I'm using currently, but there's also a free version that you can download too. So this is basically how I quickly edit my raw video footages without changing too much, bringing up shadows for more dynamic range and add some saturation and sharpness if necessary. I also found that DaVinci Resolve has a great image stabilizer and I'm going to use it to get rid of the tiny vibrations because I was walking around in my studio while recording these footages and my footsteps are shaking the camera. When you're using 10x or more magnification and recording continuous video, even a car passing from the street can vibrate your camera in micro levels. Another good thing is you can also go to your raw folders and choose the specific frame to use as a still image because all these single images will have a great quality. And again, they're all raw images and you can open them with Lightroom or Photoshop for detailed color grading as still images. You have thousands of still images in one raw video. Just make sure you have strong lighting around or at least direct sunlight because microscopic lenses are generally have very slow apertures and you need good light source. The bottom line is, you really don't have to spend too much to buy a raw recording cinema camera or an expensive macro micro lens. 
If you have the boutique mindset when creating artwork, this setup might be a good fit for your workflow. I also really appreciate the companies like Black Magic Design or Magic Lantern because of their effort to make products for affordable prices. And if you think this video was beneficial for you, please go to their website and click the donate button and contribute their magic work.